What's the history behind the forged pages of the Nine Gates of the Kingdom of Shadows? Its false engraving cost Boris Balkan his plan of summoning the devil and his life. Who did it and why? The history of the forge engraving goes back to the Sinisa Brothers restoration shop in Toledo, Spain. This is where the copy was sold to Andrew Telfer before it was resold to Boris Balkan. We'll take a closer look at Pablo and Pedro Sinisa and their wicked forgeries of Toledo. The Ninth Gate, directed by Roman Polanski, was released in 1999 and loosely based on the novel The Club Dumas, written by Arturo Perez Reverti. We know this much. The Ninth Engraving was a forgery, but the other two in the book were not, meaning only the portion of the book was reproduced. The original Ninth Engraving was left behind in the shop. We presume it's been there a very long time by the amount of dust covering it. When Dean Corso made his first visit to the shop, he questioned the Sinisa brothers if the Nine Gates could have been a forgery. It immediately piqued the brothers' interest, almost challenging their egos. If you listen carefully to Corso's question, the brothers gave mysterious answers. The following is from the script I read. I've omitted some of the exchange to better match the film and to emphasize Corso's question and the Sinisa brothers' deflections. Corso, could it be a forgery? Pablo, Forging a book is expensive. Paper of the period. The right inks. Too expensive to be profitable. Corso. I'm aware of all that, but could some part of it be forged? Restorers have been known to replace missing pages. Have you ever done that yourselves? The old men look at each other, then turn to Corso simultaneously. Pedro, looking flattered, nods. Pedro. Of course it can be done. Pablo. It requires great skill, naturally, but yes, it can be done. Corso. Couldn't that be the case here? Pablo, what makes you ask? The brothers cleverly sidestep Corso's question and instead move the conversation about the book. Pablo, watermarks, identical shades, ink, typefaces. If this is a forgery or a copy with pages restored, it's the work of a master. They all but congratulate each other on its fine work. While not exactly a confession, they never directly answer if some of the book may have been reproduced. Would they have known otherwise? Let's examine the brothers' words before they mention the watermarks and typefaces. Pedro, this book was with us for years. Pablo, many years. Pedro, we had ample opportunity to examine it thoroughly. The brothers would have known if any part of the book was not genuine, but they refused to tell. Were there other clues? Visual clues? There were ink bottles hidden in plain sight an old-fashioned printing press in the background, and paper sheets hung out to dry. Like they said, these two brothers were masters. But why did they reproduce, we presume, only one sheet? The first theory is they did it not for the money, but for the love of the book. Perhaps the loose sheet marred the otherwise impeccable condition. The brothers told Corso it wasn't profitable to go through the trouble of forging. However, the opportunity presented itself and it was an excellent sale. The second theory is they deliberately withheld one of the three engravings written by Lucifer himself. The first clue is the brothers were aware to the riddles behind the engravings. They knew more about the engravings than Balkan, Kessler, or Vargas, and quite possibly aware, or at least suspected, its importance. The second clue isn't found in the script, but only in the film. In the script, it was the engraving of the hermit with two keys in his hand where Corso discovered the initials of Lucifer while in the shop. He examined the engraving again while on the train. In the shop, however, it was an engraving of a wayfarer approaching a bridge with two gate towers, an angelic archer in the clouds overhead. Nowhere in the script did it mention the weird coincidental Spanish mustache. Very odd for the 17th century, I say. Could this be a warning that the brothers were the angelic guardians? That would only make sense if the brothers showed some hint of the supernatural themselves, right? Finally, how did the girl know? She knew the ninth engraving was a forgery, and it was from Balkan's book purchased there. She obviously knew more than she was letting on. I don't think she was quite all that human, with the powers of premonition. But that's a subject for another video. Before we get to the bonus material, like, share, or subscribe if you enjoy this content and want to see more like this one. What happened to the Sinisa brothers? Trying to find the ninth engraving, Corso returns to Toledo, Spain and the Sinisa brothers. When he arrives, Corso sees the place emptied. 
the twin bookstore owners are replaced with twin furniture movers. While Corso asks what happened, the film gives no answers other than a shrug. But the script does answer, and it's mind-blowing. One of the two movers explained to Corso that the Sinisa brothers are dead and have been a long time. Was Corso talking to ghosts? Did he walk into a supernatural world and didn't know it? Many clues are there, including hearing a boy's voice. In each of Corso's two visits to the shop, the Sinisa twins played by the same single actor. The Spanish movers also play by the same single actor. The same single actor play both pair of twins. It becomes difficult to see what is true and what is fake, and is something the Sinisa brothers excelled at. One last piece of trivia. Sinisa in Spanish means ash. The twin brothers went ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Let me know in the comments below your theories about the forge engraving. This is Mr. G of Synergy saying, The value of a forgery never exceeds the original. Check out other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.